Well, good morning or good afternoon to everyone, depending on what part of the country you are calling in from. My name is Ginger Bell, and I would like to welcome you to the Refinance to Renovate webinar program. We have a lot of great information we're going to be covering with you today. And for some of you, this may be your first time on a Zoom webinar. You've probably been on webinars before with GoToWebinar. We use the Zoom platform, so it's a little bit different. And so I want to let you know that, first of all, I have in the chat box, um, I'm posting in a link to the slides today for the webinar. And so you can access that link there. We're also going to be emailing out a copy of the slide deck as well as a copy of this recording. So we'll do that in a follow-up email that will come to you probably sometime this afternoon. We want to, <clears throat> excuse me, be able to answer any questions that you have throughout the webinar today. So I want to make sure that you know how to ask those questions. And you can listen to us on either your computer or by calling in. You can see the instructions there. And it's just a matter of clicking on your audio settings to access that information. But if you do have questions today, we want to hear from you. You have a couple of different options. You can either type in the question box or in the chat portion and I'll be able to see all those questions but what I'd like to do is to go ahead and test and make sure one that you know how to ask questions and two that you all can hear us and so if you can just type in that chat box or in the question box let me know what part of the country you're calling in from and let me know how your weather is I'm actually in the Pacific Northwest today and uh, guess what it's raining color me surprised I know Lindy <laughs> You're coming oh, from... Shocking. shocking. I know. It is shocking. Although it was 70 degrees yesterday. So welcome to spring. Oh. And I know a lot of you uh, are getting that. <laughs> freezing in D.C. I know you guys are just getting hit over and over again. Are you freezing really? Because I'm in, I'm in Richmond. It's not that cold. It's like <laughs> in the 50s today. And we've got but our it's definitely from, not sunny. Right. We've got our friends from California who are uh, bragging about their 75 degree weather. I'll yeah, be down in Los right. Angeles later this month. So I will be looking forward to that. So excellent. So you all can hear us. You know how to ask questions. So let's go ahead and get started. And I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Ginger Bell. I'm an education specialist with GoToTraining. And I work with Finance of America on a variety of training projects. And I have the pleasure today of working with Lindy Pond, who is our expert. Lindy is a nationally recognized leader in the area of renovation lending, and she has over 16 years of experience in the mortgage banking industry. Lindy has held positions of national renovation program manager for three of the top lenders in the country, taking them all to new heights of success. Now at Finance of America, she brings her proven skills to our new family here and we are so happy to have you on board and so much information that you have to share Lindy I always love talking with you about this exciting oh, program and so one of the things that uh, is important is to look at currently what's happening as far as trends in the market and and really what you're seeing out there and what prompted you to recommend having this webinar to be able to share ideas on how to build a renovate to refinance program. So what are you seeing right now in the marketplace? So one interesting thing, I mean, we all talk about the low inventory and yes, there's low inventory out there and that seems to be hitting the purchase market more, but uh, something that for the refinances is um, homeowners are moving less. So it used to be that a first time home buyer would live in their house, their first house on average three to five years. So we're going to call that four years, right? Now it has grown to 8.7 years in 2016 and expected to stay on that, on that path, on that trend. So people are staying put longer. You know, are they staying put longer because they, you know, a couple few years ago lost their job and now they have a job, but they're not making more money? Do they, got, do they get scared or burned? And now they just have enough equity now, but they don't have enough equity to sell that house and buy any bigger house. Or have they decided that, hey, I don't want to get burned or I don't want to get in over my head. I've learned from the, you know, recent economic world that we've been living in and I don't want to buy a house a hundred thousand dollars more, which the next move up house in a lot of markets is. I don't want to buy the, the house a hundred thousand more and have my payment be that much more money. So for various reasons, and we can all kind of guess, I'm sure it's 
even more reasons than just those three. But for various reasons, people are staying put longer. And so doing a renovation refinance is a perfect way to allow people to stay put longer with, you know, the new kitchen, the room addition, the finishing off the basement or the attic. Exactly. So and, and face it, there's just, there's just not a lot of inventory out there either. So Correct. they're afraid, you know, they put their house on the market. Are they going to be able to right. find another house? So, right. so I've saying, had people... Oh, go ahead. I was going to say, I've had people say, I can't afford to buy my own house again. So I could sell my right. house, but then where would I live? Because my house, you know, the price has gone up or, I, you know, so there are people who really just are stuck, you know, in, in the house they're in. Absolutely. And so because of that, we're seeing a tick up as far as remodeling and you've got some incredible numbers here. It is crazy how much, and I've been, I've seen this trend happening for the past, you know, let's say three to four years. And it just seems to be on an up, upward tick. Um, industry experts in the remodeling industry estimate that we will see a 9% on average, a 9% increase over the foreseeable future. So think about that. Most industries don't increase at that much of a increase at 9% on a regular year after year after year ongoing. So it's expected that, um, you know, we're going to see people remodeling. Again, keep in mind, the age of America's housing stock is getting older. The average age right now is 32 to 35 years old. So houses are getting older. People deferred a lot of maintenance during those years when times were tight. Things are better now. Just getting out of the better. So during those times when times were during those times when things were tight, um, you know, people weren't fixing the roof. They weren't replacing their HVAC. So there's a fair amount of deferred maintenance out there too. So it's interesting when you look across the top five home improvement project by project by region, it is interesting that uh, you know, again, it's consistent. Everyone's still remodeling a bathroom. They're fixing a roof if it needs to be fixed because, again, that's a necessity. Um, you know, the one thing, so when you look across all these bullets here and you see, you know, what someone in Florida doing versus someone in California, it's very similar. They might be in a different order, but it's very similar. One thing that I do not find on this list that we experience a lot is kitchen. Right. Kitchen is still the most popular. And I think it's odd that it's not on this list. Bathroom is it's odd. Kitchen is the most popular remodel thing that if people have money that they can do their wish list, you know, they don't have to fix the roof. They don't have to, you know, finish out the basement for grandma to move in. They don't have to do those things. The number one wish list item is kitchen. Well, and looking at that too, sometimes it's a priority because, you know, if you need a new roof, you need a roo new roof. It's time to get out of it. Right, right. Sometimes it doesn't work. You, you got to get a new heater, right. right? Right, right. But you know, sometimes it's you know the kitchen, and I know the kitchen is on my list. You know, we already did our bathroom. Now it's like, okay, kitchen is next. So those kind of things are important yeah. to look at. Yeah. Now the renovation loan provides opportunities to be able to do all those things on that list that you had, plus the kitchen. And we're not going to go right. through <laughs> all of the details. This webinar is really about thinking how to market your existing database with the renovation loan. But just quickly going through the renovation loan as far as the requirements, Lindy, um, what's an overview of it as far as someone, what someone coming yeah. in can expect? Yeah, and we just have a couple slides. Like Ginger said, this isn't to teach you the product. And if you need more information about the product, please feel free to reach out to your account exec who's got access to me. And I'm more than happy to do a, a conference call with you guys and go in more detail. But really what a renovation loan is, it's a, ha it's a loan that allows someone to, in, in this situation, we're talking about refinances, right, not purchases. It would allow them to pay off their existing debt on their current house and include renovations all in one loan. So let's say, for example, if someone owed 200000 on their house and they wanted to do a really nice kitchen for fifty, we're going to pay off that two hundred. we We're going to give them a, lo a new loan for two fifty. So it is one application, one approval process, one loan closing, one monthly payment. We're just going to give them a new mortgage, refinance their existing debt, and include additional money for renovations. Absolutely. And we're talking about refinance. So obviously the three and a half percent down payment applies to purchase, but it's still the Correct. same requirements yep. for FHA, right? Yes, it is an FHA. The one oh, I'm talking about two or three K, which is an FHA loan. So everything you guys know about FHA loans still still applies. It's actually a ninety seven point seven five percent LTV. FHA didn't change that on refinances. You still can't go above your FHA county loan limit. So you guys in California, just be careful. Um, and then it is a 620 and a 640 credit score. 620 is for the limited, 640 is for the standard. For So for those of you guys who know the difference, the limited is 
more cosmetic, less than 35,000, nothing structural, that minimum credit score is 620. For the larger, more complicated projects, the minimum credit score is 640. Perfect. So let's get into how to build a fixer upper campaign. And your team has done a fabulous job creating some incredible flyers to use. So yeah. I'll let you The marketing some group of those. is great. Yeah, marketing group is awesome. They do a great job. So we have got um, what we call our best practices as a campaign. And so as you can see on the far left, um, you know, it says step one, do this. And then stage two is a step two, you know, do this. So we really do try to make it as easy as possible. Step one, two, three. Um, this is what we want you to do. You can, you know, send an email drip campaign. You can send it through. You guys can see that there's flyers. We've got six flyers. We've also got six social media um uh, graphics as well. So past customer database, absolutely drip on them through the flyer campaign. If you don't have a past customer database or it's not big enough, or you want to do both. And Ginger, I think you're going to hit on more of how to build the campaign in a, in a few minutes. Right. Um, the social media graphics you can absolutely use for all the social media, um, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, all those things that someone might leverage. The page here that you see in the middle is what we call the customer consultation. So when you guys are talking to your past customers, and maybe you're just going to do a, you know, generic touch base. It's once a year, you touch and base with them, springtime is coming, just checking in with them. When the first few questions and the customer consultation just kind of gives you some suggestions on things that you would how to have the conversation. So maybe you've never done that before. You've never just picked up the phone and start calling your past customers. Obviously, be smart about it. The first past customer I would call would be someone who's lived in their house for, you know, four or five years. You know, they might stay there longer. They recently had a baby. They recently got married. Any of those life changes that might mean they need a bigger house, that would be a great person to pick up the phone and call. So the customer consultation really just kind of helps you with some talking points. After you have three of these phone calls, you'll have it down pat and you won't need that anymore. But one of the first questions you want to ask is, do they plan to do any um, additions, improvements, renovations, remodeling, deferred maintenance, any of those kinds of things? Do they plan to do any home remodeling the next 12 months? If they do, they're a perfect candidate for a renovation refinance loan. And some of it may, some people may not have even thought that it's a possibility. So Correct. making those phone calls, Absolutely. you know, even for those you may have refinanced out in the last, you know, four years to, you know, have a phone call with them and just say, hey, I'm just checking in with you and just wanted to, you know, find out where you are. And yep. if you're looking to buy a home, another home, remodel your home. I can help you through that process because there are programs available. So, you know, think about who you have for your database. And, you know, oftentimes we forget about that. We just think it's a matter of just, you know, oh, rates are good, so refinance. But really, people yeah. have a lot of other reasons that they may want to you know, refinance. You could find out that they have kids going to college and they need to take some right. money out for that. So this conversation could open up some other opportunities, even That's outside right. just the, the 203K. Absolutely. And keep in mind the way, the reason that a, the reason, uh, so a couple of things, the reason that a renovation refi will work where an equity line might not is that we loan on the projected after improved appraised value. Very important. So I'm going to say it again. We loan on the projected after improved appraised value. So if you're talking to someone and they need to do, put in a new HVAC system, they need a new roof, they would love to run all their kitchens and your and I are on the same page there but they just don't have any current equity in their house. They would, once those repairs are done, they just don't have it now. That is a perfect refinance, renovate um, situation scenario because we lend on that projected after improved. So let's say, for example, back to our example where they owe 200 and they want to do a kitchen remodel for 50. The house isn't worth, let's say the house is only worth they owe 200, it's worth 210, 215. They don't have enough equity, or let's say it's worth 250. They don't have enough equity to pull out a full 50 because we don't loan up to 100% loan to value on a cash out refinance, right? So in the renovation refinance world, we loan on that projected, what will the house be worth? I know the repairs haven't been done yet, but Mr. Appraiser, here's the house today. Here's the $50,000 bid from the contractor. See all the work I'm going to do and how beautiful my kitchen's going to be. My house will be, he's going to say, the house will be worth 250, 260, 275. Whatever it will be worth afterwards is what we're going to loan on. So, you know, a HELOC might not work. Um, 
a line of credit might not work because he doesn't have enough existing equity, we loan on that projected value. Keep in mind too, you now can't write off on your taxes interest rate from HELOCs and lines of credit. You can still on a mortgage. So um, a couple, you know, Gendry made me think of a couple things. One, very important, we lend on that projected after improved value. Right. And B, just the activity alone of you guys picking up the phone and making calls, I want you to get re- renovation loans, obviously, but, you know, hey, you might get a, another loan out of it. Exactly. Maybe they just need a rate term. You know, maybe they've been living under a rock and they didn't hear the interest rates were going up. So right. you never know. And they're not bad. <laughs> they're going up, but you know what? They're still great. Yeah, they're still interest awesome. Rates. Yeah. Right. So a quick yep. question before we move on, and then I'm seeing some other questions come in that I'll get to in a little bit. But since we're talking about qualification here, I have a question. Uh, what if a property owner used a PACE financing program wants to refinance, mm-hmm. pay off their current mortgage and the PACE financing? Can we use the FHA 203K for that? I want to say yes, but not knowing exactly what PACE is. I think PACE is a California California uh, bond or California DP. I've heard of it, but I promise you, I don't know every state's individual program. So what I want to say on any kind of a DPA or a bond program, and if PACE is one of those, as long as it fits the FHA criteria. So what that typically means is they've had the, um, it's a first and a second, we'll pay off both the first and second. Keep in mind, if it is a one of those DPAs or seconds, or like in Virginia, we have the VHDA program. And if you live there for five years, you don't have to pay back the second that you got, those kinds of things. Just make sure what are the, you know, is there any um, recapture on taxes? All those kind of things you guys just want to check with your, whatever the program is and see if I were to refinance this on an SHA loan, do I have any downside? Do they owe any money back? You know, can I refinance at all? Just check with your, whatever that local program is and make sure if I refinance on an SHA, there won't be any problems. There shouldn't be because it should be an FHA acceptable program, but I'm just saying double check with that specific program. Perfect. And we're getting a lot of questions in here. They're specific to scenarios, non-occupant co-borrow and things like that. And Lindy and I are going to stay on at the end to answer some of those questions that have to do with programs. But the other thing yeah. is I want to remind everyone that Finance of America has some of the absolute best account executives out there. So in addition to Lindy knowing so much, they are very well, very well versed with the FHA requirements as well as um, requirements for 203K. So you can always contact your Finance of America account executive. So we have a lot of flyers. One second. Go ahead. Sorry, just one second. Um, Someone spelled out for us in the chat. The PACE is the property access clean energy. Um, So are you saying the PACE is like the EEM? Is that, um, Sean, is that what you're saying? If if you're saying the PACE is like the EEM, energy efficient mortgage, then yes, we can combine a renovation loan with an EEM. So for example, let's say you're going to do some energy efficient. It's not an EEM. Okay. So let's just say you were going to do some energy. You can combine an energy efficient mortgage that is an FHA program as well with a 203K, but um, I'm so not just not that, I'm not that familiar specifically with the pace then. So sorry and, about that. Yeah. And he said it's actually a tax lien. So it's a little bit different. Sean, we'll make sure and get your okay. questions over to Lindy. Any questions that okay. you're getting, we have access to. And so I will forward those in, those questions to Lindy and we have your email address so we can always get in contact with you. And, and of course, always you can contact your Finance of America account executive. But let's get into where to find these flyers. And we have a question uh, that came in from Rocky. Um, Being a broker, he wants to know if he can use these flyers and put his logo and his branding on it. And that's exactly why we made them. Right, Lindy? (laughs) What a nice segue. I know. So we have, I think there's probably, we have a, have a renovation section that is located yeah. in FAMU, which is um, Finance of yeah. America University. You can contact your Finance of America account executive on getting set up with a FAMU account. And so these are not, you know, open. You need to actually log in there. But there's also a lot of other training programs in there. We have probably over 40 different courses and flyers in there that you can have access to. And so outside of the refinance, which definitely we have the most in there as far as the refinance, there's also programs, um, other programs that you can access the flyers. But yes, we've designed these to where you can, they're in a word format and you can put your branding in there, put your information in there yep. and use that to your disclosures 
Yep, you guys will want to put your own. So you guys will want to put not only your own logo and your name and contact and all that, but make sure you're also putting your own compliance disclosures, whatever your company requires. So, exactly. Yep, they're un, they're quote unbranded just for you guys. Right. So let's talk about and you hit on this a little bit about uh, thinking about who to target to. So Lindy, what are a couple couple of opportunities there? So what I think of, and and I was an originator myself, what I think about is you want to go after who do you know and who do you not know? So who do you know? You know your past customers, right? So you want to attack that past customer list with those flyers like we talked about, pick up the phone and make a phone call. When do you think the last time was their loan officer called them? So pick up the phone, call them. If, um, you know, if you've, maybe you've moved companies recently and you don't have uh, you haven't moved over your database, go find that database, go figure out who your past customers are and add them into your current, you know, marketing system into your current database. So number one, past customers, if you don't have them in there, please get them in there. Number two, refinance flyers. We have the six flyers that we talked about that you would send to your past customer database. And then number three, call them, do that mortgage checkup. Remember on the, when you pull up the how to the best practices, we, I promise it's three pages. We walk you through step one, step two, step three, and I've got everything in there that you would need to kind of help you with those talking points to get that conversation going. Yeah, and Lindy, we might want to grab that and actually just send that. I can send that out to everyone in an email so they can have access to that as well. So we can do that. So calling them is something. branded, but you guys don't need to use that. You're just going to read it and use it. You won't need to send it out to anyone. Exactly. So... Social media, things you can think about as far as marketing campaigns. We're going to go through some ideas in a minute, but, you know, just talking to people, putting information out there, letting them know. There's so many consumers that have no idea that a renovation loan even exists, let alone for a refinance. I mean, most loan officers I talk to, "Ah, I've heard of it, ah, this, ah, that. But, you know, to refinance, to use it to leverage refinances, I never thought about that. So, you know, get the word out. Get the word out through social media. You know, post it on your Facebook, put it on your LinkedIn. Um, as you're talking to homeowners, you the very first question. When you're talking to a homeowner who's calling you and saying, hey, I hear rates are going up. I was thinking maybe I should hurry up and refinance. You know, first question, do you plan to do any home improvements in the next 12 months? There's a renovation refi for you right there. So it helps sometimes soften the edges of value problems, too. If they're going to be doing renovations, anyhow, it definitely helps with that. Absolutely. Perfect. So you can also think about other possible partners. And there are a lot of associations, local associations that you can work with, whether it's remodelers, um, roofers, you know, you mentioned HVAC, designers, um, the remodelers counselor, council. I know we talked about that, Lindy. But just going to businesses that do this kind of work and, and say, hey, you know what? They have a database. And so yep. let's work together. Maybe you can do a workshop. Maybe you can create a, a flyer or, you know, some kind of a newsletter or something to send out to their database that would help them get business in as well. Um, so, you know, think outside the box as far as other possible partners, businesses in your area, because the great thing about this program is it also can spur the economy within your community. And so when you start building on that and look at the possibility of, of bringing jobs into community and bringing money back to your community, then it's a, a win-win for everyone. Well, and think about how many times a contractor goes to do a bid, how many times um, someone says, I want to build an addition onto my house. This happens all the time. I want to build an addition onto my house. And then they think they have $10,000, whether it's on a credit card or savings or half and half or whatever, right? They think that addition is going to cost $10,000. I don't know how many times I hear people think an addition is going to cost $10,000. Additions cost thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000. So the contractor goes out, he does a bid, it's $40,000. Well, they only have ten. So they can't do it. So he loses the job. They don't get their addition. Whereas if they did it on as a renovation refinance, he gets, he gets that project. So go to your, um, your contractors, your remodelers and explain to them, you know, especially one that advertises the day do additions, explain to them there's this loan that exists that can help their customers finance the project. That should be a win-win. Absolutely. The other thing to do is really think beyond just doing an email to your database or meeting with local contractors, but leverage your success. So think about things like creating a web page. And it's so simple these days to create a web page, guys. You can honestly do it in GoDaddy in like 
an evening. Um, start a video series. You know, you could create your own love it or list it um, as you start getting these programs in. And then as you develop those, post them on YouTube, post them on social media. Um, Follow a client through the process. And you think about it. I don't know about you, Lindy. I'm sure you love watching all the shows on uh, the um, different networks, whether it's Love It and List It or The Fixer Upper. I mean, it's like that. I'm slightly addicted. I have to, I have I have to like, I have, I have to record it so that I can stop because I just have to walk away sometimes. <laughs> but I mean, you could build your own local kind of a little video series where you follow a client through the process. And, you know, once you identify that client, you can sit down and videotape that first discussion, talk about what they want, and then videotape and take pictures through the remodel um, and videotape the final project. So, you know, think about not just getting that one loan, but what can you do with that one loan to leverage it and to, to really... Yep market yourself as the expert. I call it edu marketing. So it's using education to educate people on the process, how you go through it, to be able to market yourself as the expert. And really it's about creating an experience. You don't have to do it yourself. There are tons of um, individuals who out there are out there at your local schools that you could hire as an intern to videotape and edit and create their videos. I do that. I have several um, interns that help me out on different video projects that I have. Post it on your YouTube channel. Create a YouTube channel. It's, it's free to do that and it's super simple to do it. And then send them the link. So if you're talking about you know, doing this process for a client, say, hey, I would like to be able to create a video for you through the process of you getting your dream kitchen or you know, remodeling your bathroom room or whatever it is, create that video for them, make sure and brand it to yourself. And then you send them the link and they post it on social media. We've been doing this with a lot of purchase market business with great success because then the video is not just about you and what you've done, but it's about them and people will share videos that are about them. And then you know, obviously <laughs> it'll build an opportunity for you. So make sure that you send it out, but also give it to them. So Lindy, we're going to go through a couple of before and afters because love before and after photos. Right, right. We all do. And, and amazingly, I was going to tell you guys too, I mean, we have got a um, fam renovation Facebook page. So again, to Ginger's point on the slide before where, you know, share it, post it, love it, brand it, you know, obviously make sure you get everyone's permissions, you know, all those kind of legal things. But we've got a, um, it's Facebook slash fam renovation. And every day I put something up there. And it's typically something like before and after like we're getting ready to look at. Um, it is, you know, new trends. It is a new remodeling building product. I recently did a, an addition myself and I, I put all sorts of products up there that I personally use myself that I use that I like. So you guys go and follow us on Sam Renovation. That'll give you a nice little jump start to starting your own, whether it's your own YouTube channel or your own um, Facebook page yourself and just steal my stuff. I mean, the reason I put it up there is for you guys to share it and post it and steal it. So, you know, you don't have to start from scratch. I'm at least going to give you a little something every day. So here are some of our before and after pictures. Um, me personally, a the green tile. There's our after. We'll go yep, back to the I mean, before. Green tile. Yeah, I mean the green tile, right? Now, you know, no one's using those towels is the only thing, right? Because they're bows on them, but yeah. I <laughs> love the bows. So, and the next one is a kitchen. Kitchen is, again, in my opinion, the number one room that either everyone does or everyone wants to um, remodel. So. Well, it can bring the most value too. So when you're looking Absolutely. at it, you, know, the, you get your most your dollar for dollar. Yeah. Kitchen and the bathroom will always bring the most value. And, yep. you know, if you're having a conversation with someone and, and maybe they're saying, yeah, I think we're going to move, but not for a little while. And they know they need to do some updates. Why not do the updates now and enjoy yep. them while they're still living in that's the house? Right. And so might just it all change the time. your mind if I have to right. move. That's yeah. the love it or list it, right? Yeah. So uh, okay. here's the before and here's the after, which is absolutely gorgeous. Yeah, I have a tile problem. So, you know, my mind, my eyes just go right to that tile. So. Yeah, it's beautiful. And it's simple. I mean, that, um, that's a Home Depot kind of tile. It, it doesn't have to cost a lot of money. 
Right. Now, the program we're talking about is the 203K. We've had a lot of questions as far as um, our programs available under conforming. With Finance of America right now, the only program for Renos is for 203K, both the Streamline yep. and the Full. And the thing with yep. the Full, you know, Streamline is great because, you know, you're capped at the 35,000, so you can get some little projects done. But with the Full, you can do some major remodels. And this is one um, that was done <laughs> um, through FAM. Okay, so, so pay attention to the front door, it. right? Yeah, I was going to say, everyone, look at the front door. See the little, co the little horse and buggy? Remember those? When, I don't know how old everyone is, but remember, I went, when I was a kid, remember that? Your neighbor had that on their door. All right, so that's the before. And there's the after. It's so such a it wow. actually is a three, it is, it's actually a three-story building. They actually bought the house. Go back for a second, Ginger. They bought the house for, it, this is in, um, outside of Philly. So it's in Pennsylvania. Um, they bought the house for 187 and they put a little over 200 into it. So they double their square footage easily. And um, we actually have this as a video that Ginger, we could also send that in the okay. link too. Oh, that's um, great. We, yeah, we did this one as a video and it's, it's not your average everyday renovation loan, but it's quite impressive. I mean, if you can just tell from the outside, the inside looks just as awesome as the outside does. But yeah, they bought it for 187. They put 200 into it. So in theory, their loan was, you know, 400 when they were done. But I mean, you could buy a house for a dollar on the courthouse steps and you have to have the original 100% of the original existing foundation. You could tear it down to that and rebuild the whole sucker. So there's a lot you could do. Excellent. So the idea is, um, first of all, we want to provide you with resources to be able to market and brand yourself. Have you think about ideas that you can do in your area that are simple to do to be able to leverage on the success? So all you need is that one to start building. And Lindy's already said you can actually start with hers and be able to yeah, you know, build the foundation and then take one of yours. So the other suggestion, if you want to really be a rock star, is to throw a reveal housewarming party. So once you get through the process, let them tell them, you know what, let's have a reveal housewarming party. And everyone loves to see a remodel. And everyone loves a party. So you set it up. You control the invite. So you can tell them, hey, you know what? I'm going to create the invitation for you. We're going to put some pictures up. Eventbrite is a great um, system to use for that. And then you just send them the link. They send it out through social media and to their um, list as far as who they want to invite. You control the invite. So guess what? You get all that contact information. And then you can use that to follow up with. They invite their neighbors, they invite their friends, and then during the reveal party, show the video of the progress. And people will love that. And then post your video on your YouTube channel, sh share the link with them, and then remember to brand, brand, brand. Include yourself. The thing I love about using this kind of strategy in your marketing is you're not selling, you're sharing. And everyone loves to see these kind of videos. Your name is on there. So who are they going to contact when they want to do the same thing? And I've had some clients that have done this. It has been great success because now you are the person at the party that made all this happen. So you actually become that rock star. And everyone wants to talk to you about, hey, you know, what can I do in my house? So think outside the box as far as what you're doing for marketing marketing. Grab your list, um, you know, work with other contractors in your area, think about other associations. You know, you can put together different panels if you want to do something of a live event. I have um, clients that actually do this at a kitchen and bath remodeling um, business and they have a great little center there and they just go in and they, they'll do a Saturday workshop and go through the process because I'm seeing you all having a lot of questions as far as what the score is, you know, what can we do here, which are all great questions and tells me, Lindy, I think we need to do another follow-up webinar. Um, but we do have a lot of training available that is in the Finance of America University. Lindy is a great resource and I know you have a couple of reminders here, Lindy, that you want to go through. Yep, let's just get through, I think that's only one slide of a couple of reminders, and then we'll just start attacking those questions that we see. Um, so let's see, renovation, refinance, reminders, timing. So on a refinance transaction, they do tend to be larger projects. So when they're larger projects, you guys just make sure you're 
setting proper expectations to make sure you've got plenty of time. Typically on a purchase for a refinance, we'd say 45, maybe 60 days, depends on how long it takes them to get their bid. Again, on a refinance, because they tend to be larger projects, larger projects sometimes take a little longer to get the bid. So just give yourself plenty of time, 60 days. You know, it's 45, 60 again, but you know, the longer it, they live in the house already. So you don't got, you don't have an agent, you don't have the moving trucks, you don't have all those things involved. You've got a little more time, which leads to the second, the second thing is because the homeowners already live in the house, sometimes they lack that sense of urgency. So, you know, make sure you're giving yourself plenty of time, but there's that sweet spot you don't want to drag on too long. It drags on too long, docs start to expire, uh, they start to lose pay. Yeah, you just don't want it to drag on too long. Take my word for that one. Um, the other thing is two appraisals. On refinances, we get two appraisals. We get one as is and one after improved. The as is is what tells us if we're able to finance in all their closing costs or partial closing costs. The after improved is the value that we base the loan on. So keep in mind, two appraisals, full two appraisals, and typically appraisers are going to charge two full costs. So keep that in mind um, when disclosing. We actually disclose these loans for you guys. Um, so that is one nice thing, but just, just so you guys know, two appraisals, one as is and one after improved. Perfect. So let's go into a couple of questions and you know what, we yeah. are a little bit over time. So as we get into our questions, before we do that, I do want to cover where to access the information. First of all, I'm going to be sending you, I, I put the link to the slide deck in there. There's going to be a follow-up email that's going to come to you probably this afternoon or this evening, depending on where you're at. And we're going to include a copy of the slide deck, a recording, because I know some of you jumped on late. And then also we'll send the questionnaire and the link to the video as well. And to access all of the customizable renovation flyers as well as the training, you want to contact your Finance of America Wholesale Account Executive. They will set you up on the Finance of America University and then you can gain access to all the flyers and all the training. So let's go ahead and dive into some of these questions. If you don't want to stay around for the Q&A, you are more than welcome to leave. We want to thank everyone for attending. This was a very popular webinar. I know we had several hundred that signed up for it. So I can tell you all are thinking outside the box of ways to be able to market. So I want to thank you for attending. If you want to stay on for Q&A, Lindy, I'm going to um, start firing some of those away. And I'll start with the first Fire one. At me. Okay. So does a product allow for a fourplex? and are yes. zoning and permitting allowed and can you convert yeah. and s we've got a lot of them joe you are busy a single family to a duplex to a two or a three unit yep. or yep. add an in-law yep. setup so we're talking about major so we can do yeah we can do all of those things so joe's asking the question about multi-units so multi-units well fha allows this is an fha product and for those of you who asked about the conventional product, we do not have the home style at this point. We are working on it and we'll have it in the very near future. But for right now, we're just SHA. To answer one of the other questions, um, Ginger, I think that was asked, SHA also means high balance. So anything you can do with an SHA loan. So Joe, your multi-units, we can do up to a four unit. Um, we can do single family up to a four unit as long as zoning allows for it. So as long as it's not a single family house, that you're trying to convert to a four unit and zoning does not allow it, we can't do that. But SHA allows us to go up to a four unit when zoning allows for it. Um, can you convert a single family into a two or three unit? Absolutely. Again, if zoning allows for it, then SHA is fine with that. And then can you add an in-law setup, um, like an in-law suite? Absolutely. So again, as long as SHA allows for it, it is something you can do. So we can do a mother-in-law suite. We've got multi-generational living is, is becoming a trend as well. Right. So we see a lot of that going on. The only thing you guys want to keep in mind is, um, and I don't know where Joe is, but I get this question from my California folks all the time about the accessory dwelling unit, the ADA, the accessory accessory dwelling unit, that's it, the ADA, um, we can do that. As a renovation, it's got to be attached to the house in some way. So we can't do a separate standalone building in the backyard as a mother-in-law suite. That would be considered new construction. But if we were going to convert an existing garage, if we were going to build an addition onto the house, if we were going to um, you know, finish off an attic or a basement and create ADAs out of those, as long as they're attached to the existing home in some way, that's renovation. 
Perfect. If it's detached in the backyard and totally to a new entire structure, that's called new construction. And, you know, that's a whole other thing when you get into something like that, that a lot of people are looking to do and maybe to retrofit their home to be yep. able to allow their parent or someone to stay with them. So I think that's yep. important. So yep. a couple of quick questions here. Um, minimum credit score again, and is it a full doc file? Yeah, so it's 620 for the limited, 640 for the standard. The limited, remember, is 35,000. I think of 30, don't think of 35, you're going right. to run over. 30,000 and nothing structural is a limited. Anything over 30 and anything structural is a standard. So 620, 640, it is a full doc loan, as all SHA loans are. To answer one of the other questions quickly, Ginger, while we're on this one, it is an SHA loan. So when it comes to bankruptcies, non occupant co borrowers, um, two-year work history, can I count colleges, two-year work, any of those questions, it's an FHA loan. So think about an FHA loan on two, in old school, we used to have a left side and a right side of the file, credit side and property side. The credit side, the file is identical. It's an FHA loan, it's an FHA loan, it's an FHA loan all day long, no differences. So if you can do it on an FHA loan, you can do it here with a 203K. Perfect. Um, one quick question, can we finance solar into the refi? Um, yes, the only yes um, is the answer, but just be careful of comps is the only thing. Else. Same thing with like log homes. Um, we do not do manufactured, but we do modular. Any unique kind of property, just be careful of comps. Perfect. And I'm going to have this as our last question, then we're going to hop off. Um, if you do have additional questions, please to make, make sure and, and uh, contact your Finance of America account executive. And so the final question is, does the renovation remodel work have to be completed before closing the loan? Uh, great question. So um, the, um, the work begins after closing. So um, whether it's a seller that, that makes them elated and the realtor makes them ecstatic that we close the loan and then the repairs begin, or if it's a homeowner who's currently living in the house, because we are talking about refinances today, um, repair the loan closes, then repairs begin. Repairs must begin within 30 days. They must be completed within six months. If there's some reason they can't do either of those, we need a good reason, and then we document the file. So not life or death there, but um, HUD would like the work to begin within 30 days to be completed within six months. It all starts after closing. If you have got someone who lives on a property, they started a project. We get this all the time. They started a project, and they ran out of money, and they can't finish it. What I tell them to do is stop spending money. Stop working. Stop doing anything, because... I can pay for anything that happens after closing. I cannot pay for anything that happens before closing. So that is our line in the sand. Um, as far as the contractor and when they get paid, um, the contractor on a limited can get some money up front for materials and then gets one draw because, again, it's a get in, get out, less than 30000 nothing structural, mostly cosmetic. So on a limited, it's one they can get some material money up front and then it's one draw. On a larger project like we've been talking about here, $50,000 addition, it's going to be paid on a draw basis. So work will get done, it'll get inspected, and then we cut a check to the contractor. We, it's a two-party check, it gets, you know, uh, it gets UPS so we can track it, all that stuff. So money is paid, repairs begin after closing, money is paid on a draw basis. Perfect. Excellent information. Thank you, Lindy, so much. This has absolutely just been fabulous. Thank you all for your questions and for attending. And uh, we look forward to seeing you on our next webinar. So everyone have awesome. a great Thank week. You.